Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. No, the lights aren't out here, but I wanted to make a demonstration. Up until 1853, this was light. Candles. And along came Ignacy Lukasiewicz from Poland and Robert Dietz from the United States. 1853, they both invented the kerosene lamp. Simultaneously in different spots. Funny world, huh? Well, the thing was, it worked really, really good. Rather than having this dim little candle, now you had a much brighter flame. and it was more sustainable. You still had to trim the wick, but not anywhere near as much. And this lantern will burn for eight hours on a tank full of fuel. Now this is a lamp for in your dining room or office so that you could see still very difficult to read by, but it works. But out walking around in this yard, this light just really wasn't that good. I mean, I can see the camera, but you can just barely see my face. And this lamp, I could carry. It's hard to see the details of the lanterns because of the contrast from the light. So I'm gonna turn the overhead lights on and we'll talk about the lanterns themselves. One of the features of the Dietz design is you can lift the globe using this lever. That way you can raise up the wick light the wick and drop the globe all without touching the glass. If you try that with this thing it's going to burn your fingers. Because the only way to get the globe off is to pick it up. Also, this one is windproof. The design of the globe allows air to come into the bottom and out the top without allowing wind to flicker the light. Another advantage of a light like this, it provides heat. And in cold weather like this, if you were out on the prairie and something happened that you uh, lost power, a lantern like this will keep your house warm enough so that the pipes don't freeze. It won't warm the whole house up to shirt sleeve temperatures, but if you keep it up above 32, that's good enough. It's a simple design. Just a tank, the wick, and the lamp base.
my mother did her homework with a lantern just like this one and my grandfather went out to the barn with one of these Dietz lamps and my aunts and uncles went out and milked the cows in the morning with one of these Dietz lamps. According to the family stories, this one came from my great uncle Garland's farm. Now, I don't know that he used this one back in the 1800s, but he could have. These things have been around for a long, long time. It's always a good idea to have an emergency candle and a blanket in your car, especially in Michigan in this time of year, because the weather gets pretty cold, and when it's snowing hard, it's not hard for you to get off the road and end up in a ditch where people can't see you. So having the light to keep your car warm and a little light so that people can see the car is always a benefit. If you choose to carry a lantern in your car, it's best to leave it dry. You can always pour some uh, fuel in it. Take along a bottle of kerosene, pour some fuel in it, light it, and you got eight hours of heat and light. This will warm your car up and allow you to stay warm while you're stranded. And also, if you need to walk around outside, you got a light with you. Now, is this something that I want to do? No, walking down the street carrying one of these things, not a great fun thing. But it sure beats walking down the street without one. And it beats trying to go anywhere carrying just a candle. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching. This video is not to be viewed by anyone under the age of 13 in the U.S. or 16 in the European Union without the express written permission of the parents or legal guardians of the underage person. Such written permission must be on file at the local government entity in charge of enforcing the rules and regulations established by the FTC. Anyone violating these terms is admitting by default that they hold harmless the owners and operators of this channel. Any and all questions should be addressed to your local branch of the FTC.